at the end of the movie Braveheart. Mel Gibson is lashed to the rack, is being murdered by means of an outlandishly extended, excruciating torture. And through all of this, he's bellowing, Freedom! Freedom! And the crowd goes wild, and the audience goes wild, and uh, a goodly number of people who are adherents and advocates of the idea of human liberty go wild for Mel Gibson, William Wallace, shouting freedom while he's being tortured to death. What was the freedom he was campaigning for? Was it his own individual freedom? No. <laughs> was it freedom for all Scotsmen to be free of all others and to live their lives in peace and cooperation without domination by an outside usurper? Well, yes, because they wanted their own inside usurper instead. They wanted to throw off the horrible tyranny of English domination in order to replace it with the horrible tyranny of Scots domination. They wanted to have a local pirate preying upon them rather than some out-of-town pirate. Welcome to 1776, July 4th, 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Blah, 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 blah. We don't want some out-of-town pirate. We demand our own local pirate instead. And to their credit, the Articles of Confederation, the government that they formed after the Declaration of Independence, was pretty goddamn libertarian. It was the most libertarian government in the modern era, and so accordingly, 13 years later, it was destroyed. We not only demand to be preyed upon by our own local pirate, we want our local pirate to have lots of extra special, extra legal powers to enrich the favored at the expense of the unaware. The Articles of Confederation was fairly libertarian and might plausibly have become more libertarian over time, except that Alexander Hamilton and a bunch of other sharpers living particularly in Boston and New York, but also in, also in places like Charleston and Charlotte, figured out how to turn a nation-state to their advantage. And they really didn't do much of it. It's The 1789 Constitution is not all that terribly criminal, except that it is the pretext on which all of the subsequent criminality has been based. And when the Tea Party people and other um, reputed patriots rail on and on and on about, about going back to the Constitution, I wonder what the hell it is they're thinking. The Constitution is a rent-seeking document. It was devised by con men to pull the wool over the eyes of the American people and to create a giant system of rent-seeking that is now oscillating completely out of control. That when we're talking about predation on Wall Street, we're talking about predation that was started by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, John Jay, and the other authors of the 1789 Constitution. So, my question on this Independence Day weekend, today is July 3rd, 2016, tomorrow is Independence Day, my question is freedom from what? This is how to pursue your own damn happiness, how to pursue your own damn independence. And that, I guess, we look at this ass backwards as we do everything else, we insist that we must have a government to do this, we must have a government to do that. The minarchists among the libertarians say, oh, no, 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 all we need are the police, the law courts, and the military to prevent foreign invasion. The problem with any pro-government argument is that it's a pro-dependence argument. Independence is a wonderful word because it implies my freedom from you, or my country's freedom from your country, or 
um, my liberation from my former imprisoned or incarcerated state, that's my independence. But the other way to think about independence is the absence of dependence upon some other person or entity, some social organization, some government. And so when we depend on the state for the police, the law courts, and the military for protection from foreign invasion, we are uh, leaning on a very slim read. First, because there's no guarantee that they'll do those jobs competently. Second, there's uh, every reason to suppose that they will do them corruptly, as we are seeing right now, particularly in the case of defending the national borders. Um, but the most consequential thing is that it makes you dependent upon them. It, it robs you of your sovereignty and your efficacy to manage your own life independently. And so that is my remonstrance for Independence Day this year, is to think about independence as your separation from every other social, involuntary social organization, involuntary social entity that would seek to make you dependent on it. Pursue your own damn independence by making yourself less and less dependent on people who are trying to enslave you. You want to be free. You don't want to be free from the King of England. You want to be free from all coercion. You want to be free from all force. You want to be free from all compulsion. And you want to be free from the worst consequences of the collapse of this corruption machine devised in 1789. Here's to 1776, to hell with 1789, and here's to making 2016 the birth of a new American liberty. My name is Greg Swan. This is the Church of Splendor. I'm so glad you could join me today, and I'll talk to you again next week.